man, that last video was long, but um, we're now able to get to some of the funner things in specifically with the Beaver Builder plugin. Um, so this video here, video number three, is going to go over um, basically where is Beaver Builder. Kevin, you didn't show me where um, the customizer is. You showed me how I can do all these amazing things with the, the global options that Beaver Themer allows me to set. However, Kevin, I want to start laying out some stuff on some pages. Uh, but before we get there, we do need to go over a few things. So where is Beaver Builder? How do you activate Beaver Builder on a page? Um, we're going to go over the whole UI of those particular pages um, whenever you activate Beaver Builder on a page. And then um, I'm going to go over using Beaver Builder on pages and posts. Um, I'll give you some feedback there or my thoughts on just using Beaver Builder um, on pages. So let's jump right on into it. I'm excited. This is the, this is what I've been waiting on. So two, uh, obviously Beaver Builder is a page layout tool. So let's go ahead and hover over pages and click on all pages. And what you notice is that there's two pages. Um, one, we've got the privacy policy page um, that's already here. And when I hover over it, you notice that there's an option that says Beaver Builder with a grayed out circle. When I hover over sample page, you see the same thing, Beaver Builder with the gray um, whole um, grayed out, right? Or a circle grayed out. Um, what I'm going to do is if you want to activate Beaver Builder, you actually can go right on ahead by clicking on Beaver Builder here. However, right, we're not going to do that. I'm going to show you all three ways. The first way that I'm going to show you is you'll simply click on the page title. Um, you'll probably get this pop up. We'll, we'll click. We'll, ex we'll exit out of that. We are Beaver Builders around here, not Gutenbergers, I guess. I don't know. And I completely, I have nothing against Gutenberg because I actually think it's a good thing for posts. I really think that it's very, very good for that. However, Beaver Builder kills it when it comes to being a page layout tool. So with that, um, Kevin, I don't see anything that says Beaver Builder. You know, let me show you. You can click these three icon these three button icons over here to the right and then it says plugins convert to beaver builder we'll click that and then voila beaver builder beaver builder lets you drag and drop your layouts on the front end let's go ahead and do that so what we we whoa well first because i've i've had some issues with this i recommend going ahead and click on update just so that it updates the page and then click on launch beaver builder get this little turning icon and then boom, right? You are now in Beaver Builder edit mode, the funnest place to be, right? Um, what you'll see is this pop-up. Welcome, it looks like this might be your first time using the Beaver Builder. Would you like to take a tour? I'm going to say, I'm going, going to say yes. However, this video is going to go over a good majority of with, with what this um, tour is going to do. But I say that 99% in confidence because I've never taken the tour. So I don't know if it's going to show like this one new thing that I'm not aware of. But um, for you, if you click on yes, please, what it does is that it actually tells you what everything is. These are how to add content, rows and columns and all this other kind of cool stuff, right? I'm going to go over all of this with you um, and make that work. However, the first thing that I want to go over is let's just say you said no, you don't want to go through the onboarding process of having Beaver Builder show you how it works. The idea is that you can click this drop down arrow here and click on help. And after clicking on help, you can click on take a tour and it will redo the tour for you. So the idea is just that you did miss out on anything. You can always retake this tour, but you do have the pleasure of being able to um, have me walk you through um, basically how to access beaver builder and even throughout this course what everything is so um whenever you activate beaver builder um you'll notice you're in beaver builder because one you'll see the beaver here in the upper left hand corner and really that's it um one key thing to take note is that the page title so if you remember um the page did initially say um sample page at the top Whenever you activate Beaver Builder, one of the options, one of the default settings is that Beaver Builder does um, automatically remove the um, 
the page title of the pages, which is pretty awesome. Because I remember back in the day before I started using Beaver Builder, I would either have to use CSS or get a plugin to get rid of those page titles. Um, and then um, after, you know, it's it's active, it's it's set up, and now you can see that you can kind of hover over everything. Um, hover over everything it, to be able to edit it. You'll click it and be able to edit it. I'm not going to go over that in this video. This video is specific to where is Beaver Builder and going over the settings for all of what Beaver Builder includes. But I will be going over um, columns and dragging out modules and stuff like that in the late, in the, the next coming videos. So from here, uh, this is one way to activate Beaver Builder, but I'm not going to keep it active. So I'm actually going to click on discard, say OK. Um, and then I'm going to go back because I want to show you the second way of activating Beaver Builder. So I showed you how to click on pages. Um, click on sample page and then click on click on sample page and then click on launch beaver builder here the next way that you can access a beaver builder page is by doing what i told you you could have did the first time it's just hover um, come to the pages area where all of your pages are active and just click on beaver builder from there it immediately loads you up into beaver builder mode my favorite way, I'm not going to save it this way, but uh, my favorite way of accessing Beaver Builder is when you log in to your, your WordPress website, you get this navigation bar at the top. Um, the idea is, is just that this admin bar is only shown to people that are logged into the back end of your website. So if, we're, if I was to click on hover over um, my website title here and click on view visit website. From here, you get this bar at the top. Now, mind you, hold on, I need to go back because Beaver Builder is not currently active on blog posts, and I will show you that in a minute. However, let's hover over settings. Let's go to reading, static page, sample page. Let's go ahead and click on there. So, okay, here we go. So, uh, now that we're on a page, because once again, Beaver Builder, as of right now, is only set to be active on pages, and I'll go more into that specifically in this video. Um, what you'll notice is that you'll see whenever you log into the, you got that well, a little, little tongue tied. You've got the admin bar at the top, and now you can see Beaver Builder at the top of this um, in the in the admin bar, and you see the grayed out circle. Basically, any page that has a green circle active, that lets you know that that page is powered by Beaver Builder and you can use Beaver Builder to edit it. However, this is grayed out. Well, if you want to convert a page into a Beaver Builder power page, you would just simply click on Beaver Builder here. And once again, it brings you right on into it. And if you notice, it immediately got rid of the sample page title. And yeah, that's basically it. Um... I'm going to go ahead and publish it now. So when I click done and publish, and I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page, you'll notice now that Beaver Builder has that green icon. This lets you know that Beaver Builder is active on this page. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the back end of the site and also click on pages. If I hover over privacy policy, you notice that it's still grayed out. However, when I hover over sample page, because it's a Beaver Builder powered page, you can see that the green circle is there. The only section that does not have this green circle um, area is when you actually click on the page, but that's actually okay because if you see this, right, launch Beaver Builder, this lets you know that the page is powered by Beaver Builder. Now, um, one pro tip, um, if you're a developer working with a client and a client tells you, hey, my web page, um, now has the sample page back on it or if you're working on your site um if you're diying your site and you're like hey i don't see um well i don't see a uh, sample pages pop back up on my site i don't know what happened typically this is what may have happened so you may have came to um to this back end and click use standard editor and just maybe completely disregarded this statement. Switching to the native WordPress editor will disable your Beaver Builder layout until it is enabled again. Any edits made in WordPress editor will not be converted to your page builder layout. Do you want to continue? I'm just gonna say yes. So the idea is that if we say yes to that, and let's say we do update, and this actually just happened to a, a client of mine 
maybe about two weeks from this video. Um, so now we've updated the page. Let's, we've done with whatever we needed to. Matter of fact, let's actually make an update. Um, remove block. For whatever reason, it's not lit. Well, let's come up here. Remove block. So we made an update, and I made an update, right? So now we've just got two block quotes and two sections with content in it, right? Um, so from there, now I want to click on view page. So I view the page, and I'm like, whoa, what happened? You know, the page title's here. What happened? Well, what you notice is, is that Beaver Builder has been disabled because it's no longer green. What you'll simply need to do is click on Beaver Builder again, click on Done and Publish, and now at that particular point in time, everything is backed active. But, right, this is the biggest but, remember, we deleted this paragraph. Per that statement, right, it says that anything that you edit while outside of beaver builder mode on that page since it had already been converted the idea is that it will not save so the idea is just that you will need to actively make the edits through beaver builder for those changes to take effect um so that's this option here so the next thing that i want to go over right now is just basically um the, whenever you activate beaver builder uh, what all do you need to know now um I'm going to be a little bit more thorough than the onboarding um, video. So this this is where things kind of get a little bit techy and, and, and a little bit long. But so stay with me because I really want you to understand everything that Beaver Builder does. Um, so the first thing is, is over here to the right, if we click this plus icon, these are all of our modules. Um, so once, um, if you remember from the very first video, uh, the modules that you can cut on and off this is basically with what I'm meaning. So if you plan on never using the countdown or the number counter, you can actually deactivate these two and they will not populate whenever you click this. Because once again, this list can get very, very long because there's add-on packs that you can, which will allow you to add more um, power pack modules to, or power pack, beaver builder modules to this list. But nevertheless, um, you know, these are all your modules. You can drag them out um, and use them. Um, I'm not going to go over the modules uh, as of yet in this video, but for the most part, when you click this plus icon up here at the top and you hover over or uh, modules is the default option. Uh, this is where you can kind of see all your modules and you simply would drag them out um, into the uh, I, I was to the page. Right. I was about to call it a canvas, um, but I don't think that that would be a bad thing. Um, drag them out onto the page and be able to customize them accordingly. Um, from there, you'll notice over here to the right, we have rows. Uh, this is basically, uh, all websites have rows and columns. Uh, and honestly, since the beginning of web design, everything was almost built in rows and columns. So, um, for instance, so not for instance, but if you have, a, for instance, this is, and I'm going to say it anyway, for instance, <laughs> Um, the idea here is that um, this is one column, right? Um, and the idea is, is that you can just simply drag out one column and then you can put your modules in that column, right? Um, let's say you want to have a two column setting. You'll draw, drag out a two column setting. And then now you can drag out um, a text editor module here, right? Um, and then let's say you want a photo over here, right? So the idea is just that, and then you basically kind of get the concept at that point. You can just continue to drag out modules as needed, uh, whether it's a three layout, four layout, so on and so forth. And then you'll use the modules to port it, to drag those options in. Now, do keep in mind, if you're, I don't necessarily want to say a pro user, but the idea is, is just that you don't have to drag out a row. If you know everything is going to go in one row, you can really just drag out the module itself and it will populate a row for you. So this is the the, the blue border on the outside is actually the row. And then the, the blue option in the middle, that's actually the module, right? Um, from there, there's some templates. So Beaver Builder does include um some templates which is pretty good right so um and and the way you activate a template is just simply click on it uh, because we already got content here 
uh, it's going to ask, do you we want to replace the existing layout, meaning that do you want to delete everything that's on this page to put the new layout in there? Or do you want to append it to the new layout, meaning that you, do you want to keep all of your content and then you just want the layout to be added to the bottom of the page? I'm gonna just going to say replace existing content. Um, warning, changing this template will replace your existing layout. Do you really want to do this? Yes, I do. And then as you can see, um, we've got the template added into the website, right? Real simple, real easy. Um, it's pretty good to use templates if, you, um, if you're needing to have like a starting point and then you just alter everything. But as you can see, this here, if you notice, is a row. So, well, these are the settings for the row. So you can see this is a row. And then from here, you can kind of see... Um, this is a, a heading module with the text in it, text modules, stuff like that, right? So that's how the template section works. Um, and then and just so that you can see, you've got landing page templates, and this looks a lot. Uh, we've got content pages. So for instance, an about us, a couple of about us, about me's, service pages, photo galleries. It's a lot, right? A, a lot uh, to be included um, with this. Um, there's, you can also save your own templates. I'll go over that, um, as we get further into, um, into this video series, but I won't be going over that now and then saved. So this is, um, you can actually save rows, save columns and save modules. So for instance, let's say you configure a button that's not using the global options that you want to use. You can actually create a button, save it, and then actually create your own saved configured modules. Um, I'll go, I'll be sure to go over that as well whenever I'm going over the templates and all that kind of cool stuff. So um, if you can tell um, just from me going over these few things, it's got modules, it's got templates, and you can save those modules and temp and create your own templates, which will really allow you to effectively design out your site. So I really, really hope that you're getting that piece of what we're going over. Beaver Builder is a very, very powerful tool. Um, so from there, right, so we've gone over all of this. Oh, one additional thing that I want to go over. So you can actually take this off, um, detach this. Well, let me take that back. Boom. So whenever you click on um, a module, you can actually drag the, the, the box around um, and then you can actually append it to the left, as you can see here, so that you can see your full design or you can append it to the right and you can still see your design here. I mind, if you're going to append it to the right, I mean, obvious. Well, there's some pros to that, right? So the idea is that if you click this plus icon, this here just does a drop down and just shows you all of the options in that menu. However, when you append this to the left, what happens now at that point is, is you can click on, um, for instance, I'm just going to click on save. Um, all of your option sets are always viewable now to the left. So now you don't have to click this plus icon. You'll always have access to all of your settings over here to the left. Uh, and be able to show everything here. So that way you don't have to worry about every, like for instance, if I click on the text module now, it shows me the options here. If I click on the button module, you can tell that you see that everything is updating automatically, um, automatically because I've appended that pop out, the configuration pop out over here to the left. Um, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that though and close that out. So now we're gonna go over this option set here. So we're gonna click the drop down. So you've got some manual ways that you can um, publish the layout. So if you notice, you can click publish layout by just simply clicking here or clicking done and publish over here to the right. There's also a shortcut. So if you're a power user, you can just simply click the command or I'm assuming control P icon and that will publish your post. Um, if you want to save a template, obviously this is how you can do that. I'll, I'll go more into that. Uh, like I said, later on, but for the most part to save a template, you can, um, save this page as a template. You would just click this, give it a title, and then you'll be able to save that. Or you can, can click command or control J. Um, you can duplicate a layout, um, by duplicating the layout, you would click it, right? Ooh. And then as you've seen, I said, Ooh, I clicked it on accident, but you can see that it basically duplicated the whole page. Uh, let me actually go click the back button. 
the page duplicated the layout, meaning that it duplicated the layout and the page. Click the drop down. You can preview the layout. Um, so if you click preview layout or click the P button on the icon with the, um, on your keyboard, what that does is that gets rid of most of the Beaver Builder layout, um, excluding these four buttons up here at the top. So that you basically you can see all of the um, all of the website as it needs to be seen without all of the uh, excuse me. Um, without all of the um, Beaver Builder UI in the place, in the way. Another beneficial thing is that you can test out how the layout will look on tablet views. And then you'll also be able to view how it will look on mobile. Now, obviously, this template could use some refining because the R is down here and that kind of stuff. But I will go over those options on how you can set that up, um, set those options up there um, and then basically from there if you want to get out of preview mode you can click the p i uh icon the p on your keyboard again or just click on continue editing up here if we click the drop down again um we can click on responsive editing which is very very key so the idea here is that you can not only edit you don't have you're not constrained to just having to edit your your layout in um, desktop mode and then bouncing back and forth between the preview mode to see how it responds. You can actually click this drop down, click on responsive editing. And if you notice here now, responsive editing, we're in tablet mode now. So what you see here now is exactly with what, um, what am I trying to say? This is exactly, you can edit the this information while in tablet mode. So that you can uh, make sure that on tablet devices, your website looks a, a specific way. And then lastly, if you click, not lastly, but in addition to that, you can click on the phone icon here. And this is where you can edit all of your content in mobile view. Meaning that for desktop, you might want a font to be 30. On mobile, on tablet, maybe you want it to still be 30. However, on desktop, maybe specifically here, I mean on um mobile view you know cell phone um, view smart device view the idea here is that you might need that 30 font to go to a 24 so that the website looks a certain so that you don't have these dangling font uh, um um uh alphabet alphabet characters um dangling out like you see here in agency right um, and then whenever you finish, you can click on exit and then uh, that will bring you back here. So once again, another powerful tool of Beaver Builder. If we click the drop down again, you can check the revisions. So basically, let's say you've made some revisions, revisions, revisions. You're like, oh, man, I don't like how this has went. This went. I need to backtrack a little bit. This is where you can find those revisions. Um, lastly, layout and CSS. Well, not lastly, layout and CSS JavaScript. So. Um, if you know, and I, I, I believe I may have misled you in the previous video. So you can add CSS and JavaScript per page. And this is exactly how you do it. So if you do have some custom code that only needs to be addressed on one specific page, uh, for styling, you can add that information here. And then as far as JavaScript is concerned, you can add JavaScript per page by just adding that code here. Um, from there, if we click the drop down again, we've got global settings. This here is probably the, I just started using this as of recording this video, I think a week ago. Um, and I'm gonna show you the main thing. So if we click on global settings, there's a couple of options here. You can see that there's the CSS and the JavaScript. So you could kind of still do things globally here. However, I would say put it in the theme versus the plugin. However, where you would use this most likely when I'm now that I'm thinking about it, um, let's say you're not using Beaver Builder or the Astra theme. Let's say you're just using some other plugin or another theme. You can add your CSS here and your JavaScript here. Um, through Beaver Builder itself, through the plugin itself, and not necessarily the thing. But with that being said, um, default page heading. So remember I told you whenever we activate Beaver Builder, the page heading goes away. The reason why it goes away is because it's set to no. If you're somebody that just wants to keep those page titles, 
you can say yes and it'll keep it right um let's actually see how that works let's click on save it's going to click done publish you refresh the page so if you notice now the page heading did not get removed after activating the um after knowing that beaver builder is activated so let me go ahead and click on beaver builder again Click this drop down, global settings, click yes. We're going to go to no. Um, and then just for the sake of this video, I'm going to click save. And you can see that it's gone now. I'm going to click this drop down, click on global settings again. So default page headings, we've got those removed. You can cut those on and off as needed. Um, if we scroll down, so this is basically where I get I just found that I just sped up my design process um, a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and append this to the left. So um, whenever I click on, oh, well, I really don't want to do that right now. Let's see. When I go to rows and I drag a row in, right, one of the first things that I always do is click the wrench icon. Um, I say I want the row to be full width. I want the row to be 1,300 wide. Um and then I'll come to advance and add padding, 65, 65, right? And then I'll click save, and then I'll drag my content in. And then I'll do that for every single row that I need created. What I have recently found out is that by clicking this dropdown and clicking on global settings, I can basically say, hey, I want my padding to be 65 here, right? I can make, I want my max width to be 1300 pixels wide. And I do want the default width to be fixed. I don't want that to change. Um, and then I can click on save. After that, when I drag out my next module, now, while it did not drag out to be full width, because I did set it, well, let's actually go ahead and make that correct. Click that drop down, global settings. And then I said default row width. Let's click full width and then default row content with fixed. Click on save. So basically what I'm doing now is, is that when I drag out a column now, it's now exactly what I want it to be. I did not know that that was the thing that you can have set up until literally two weeks ago. And mind you, I've been using Beaver Builder for three years now, going on three years. So, um, so the idea is just that now when I pull out all of my content or my modules or my rows, right? It's already preset, and this is one less thing that I have to do because I've got it set up in the global options, global settings. Um, from there, you can actually apply um, some columns. So basically, um, th while this is the row, right, we've got a one column in here at the moment, uh, but you can put how much margin and padding you want in between e each um, module, I mean, um, column. From there, for the modules, um, let's say um, you want, uh, for instance, let me go ahead and show you that. So click on modules and let's just drag out photo. So there's a photo module in here and these are the settings for that. If I click on advanced, you notice that the margins are all set to 20. That's the default. In most cases, that's fine. Um, however, if we come to global settings, come back to uh, modules, let's say we want that to be 32 and then click on save. Let's come to that same photo module, drag that in, click advanced. Hold on, did I click the right one? Or I didn't click save, so let's come down here. Global setting options, 30, just click on save. And then let's actually delete these, so, because I can't see, click this drag out. Click here, advanced. I don't know why I didn't say 32. I'll have to look into that. So once again, this seems to be another thing that I'm going to notate. Uh, let's go to global settings. Yeah, margins 32. I guess I'll end up having to look into that. But nevertheless, uh, you should. I don't know why, why I didn't take that. But uh, probably send a support ticket. But nevertheless, um, the modules, 32 pixels of margin space. Um, and then we've got the responsive layout. So basically, we do want our website to basically stack, meaning um, whenever uh, the, uh, the browser or the, the viewable 
uh, uh, area that we're looking on a website, we do want the website to respond. We do want things to stack on top of each other and respond accordingly to the device size. Um, so that's enabled. Yes. Auto spacing. Yes. So if we look at this, when auto spacing is enabled, the builder will automatically adjust the margins and paddings in your layout. Once the small device breakpoint is reached, most users wants to leave this enabled. I'm one of those users. <laughs> Uh, and then basically, even from the customizer option, you can also um, enable this here. Once again, this here is um, a very key because um, let's say your theme does not allow you to set your device breakpoints. You can do that here, right? You have that ability to do that here. Um, and then lastly, the base font size, um, 16 um, you can edit this. You can actually edit this in Beaver Themer. However, once again, if your theme does not provide this while using Beaver Themer, you can uh, Beaver Themer, the Beaver Builder plugin. You can actually set your um, font size here. Um, once you finish all of that good stuff, you just simply click on save and that'll save everything. Um, if we click the drop down one more time. Um, you'll see that we can change the UI brightness. So basically we can change, there's a dark mode. Um, I've kind of adopted dark mode a little bit in my development. Um, however, you can click it again and it'll put it back to, I guess, light mode, bright mode. I don't know. Um, and you can also hit the O icon to um, cut that on and off. Um, let's go ahead and explore WordPress admin. Um, okay. So I guess if you click on WordPress admin, you this easily takes you to the edit page. This takes you to the dashboard. Um, you can manage your templates here. Uh, and then you can click on customized themes, customized themes. So basically the customizer. Um, the help. So um, with Beaver Builder Pro, I'm not certain how the free option looks, but um, one, you can contact support. That's the main thing is the contact support. I don't know if you can contact support from the free theme um, how, or if, if there's a link to it. It might still be. I don't know. Uh, but you can contact support, um, view their knowledge base. So they have a knowledge base of basically like basically a text format of how all of this stuff works. However, you've got the luxury of watching this video. You can re-trigger to take a tour and then they actually do have a four and a half minute video on um, how everything that I'm going over with you now throughout the series, they have a four and a half minute video that kind of gives you the rundown on how everything works with Beaver Builder. Um, and then lastly, they've got all the keyboard shortcuts. So you want to dismiss active panel, publish changes without leaving Beaver Builder, so on and so forth. So they've got all your shortcuts here. Um, let's see. So um, this is, oh, well, there's one additional thing. This bell icon, if that red little dot's been giving you an anxiety because you've been wanting me to go over it, uh, for the most part, when you click on that bell icon, this basically gives you their, uh, they give updates um, every once in a while. I don't want to say every once in a while. Yeah, I, I, I would have to say every once in a while. Um, about what they've updated with the, the plugin, the themes, what their goals are, do product offerings and stuff like that. So whenever you see that red icon, that basically just means, hey, there's a new blog post. You And I do recommend taking a, taking a read at it because um, if you're a developer one, this lets you know what new features, what they've done with the plugin and what you could potentially be offering in the future. And then from that, um, if you're just somebody DIYing out a website, well, to that point, if they do make a, a new offering that's specific to whatever, uh, that may be beneficial to you to beneficial for you to implement into your website. Um, I really do recommend, um, uh, taking a look at these blog posts that they um, put out once a month, once a quarter, every other month or whatever time frame that they seem to have been on, um, for the last few, uh, blog posts. Um, let's see. And now, um, uh, whenever you finish making a post, a blog, a blog post, finish anything, this little blue button up here at the top, as we've referenced a couple times, if you click done, you can discard, meaning that you can completely delete all the hard work you've done. You can save it as a draft, meaning that it won't publish the changes. It won't override it. And people on the front end of your website won't see these changes. Um, however, it will save your work or you can click on publish, which I'm doing right now. And that will publish 
uh, your page. Now, um, the last thing that I want to go over in this video is um, a blog post. So to do that, I'm actually and blog posts and Beaver Builder and why I recommend not using it for um, blog posts. However, you can. Um, but before I do that, I want to um, actually make that menu. Um, and I'm just scrambling through this real quick post. This video is not to go over the core functionalities of um, Beaver, I mean, of WordPress. This is to go over Beaver Builder, so I won't be going over this um, too, at all, really. But I will be going over um, Beaver Builder related content. So give me just a few moments. So uh, let's go ahead and go to menus. Let's go to header menu. So now we've got a menu because we're going to need that menu to go over what I am about to go over. So um, this is our current homepage for the um, website, right? Just install the theme. I mean, a, a template um, from there. You'll notice we've got Beaver Builder with the green circle, which means that we can't edit this page. But when we go to a blog post. Beaver Builder is not shown whatsoever. Why? Because Beaver Builder is not active for blog posts. Well, Kevin, how do I activate Beaver Builder on blog posts? Y'all ask all the right questions, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So um, when you log to the back end of your website, you'll go to settings and click on Beaver Builder. After doing that, you'll click on post types. After clicking on post types, you'll click on post, save post, or save post types, and then we can go back to the front end of our website, click on hello world, and now you can see that Beaver Builder is now an option to use to edit your blog post page. So if we were to click on Beaver Builder, um, now you can see everything you can edit your blog or you can basically edit your blog post now mind you by doing this kevin why am i only able able to hover over this one piece of text i'm not able to edit anything else on this page the reason why is because this is the only editable section on your web on post pages right um so one, that's one of the reasons why I say I don't recommend using Beaver Builder because this basically you just got a lot of stuff in the way. Two, Gutenberg or the native WordPress page uh, page builder or page layout tool um, is actually prof proficient in this area. Uh, and I'm going to show you what I mean. So I'm going to go ahead and click done and disregard. I don't want to save these changes. Um, and then I'm going to go back to the back end of my website, click on post. This is that test post. Click on Hello World. Um, ultimately, I'm, this isn't a Gutenberg thing. I'm the Gutenberg training thing. But in short, I'm like, this here is fine. Um, Matt Mullenwig, the guy, one of the guys um, who created WordPress, he actually create. He, he you can you can actually write out a full blog post in Google Docs, copy that information, paste it here. And everything will lay out just fine. Um, 90% of the 98% of the time, because I've done that a few times. But the idea is just that I really recommend using the block page builder and just typing out your content here um, simply because this here is a whole lot, in my opinion, better than using um, Beaver Builder. I think Beaver Builder is a very proficient at building web pages. However, I do not think it is very, it is the most efficient way to um, produce a blog post. Um, however, if you do want to produce a blog post with Beaver Builder, um, you'll activate it as I've shown you through the settings um, tab in Beaver Builder, and then you'll just click this three icons. You can convert this content to uh, Beaver Builder. You can also come to the um, post area hover over hello world and you'll notice beaver builder is there and then you'll also be able to notice that beaver builder is also um, active at the top page here now the final bit of information that i want to show you in this video is um actually some page attributes so if we come over here and click on pages 
And here goes that copy we made earlier when we duplicated the layout um, or duplicated the template, I believe. Um, but if we click on edit, and I actually am gonna go ahead and pull up the home page. Let's say, uh, as of right now, you can see we've got a header and we've got a footer down here below. Um, one additional thing that comes with Beaver Builder, and for me to show this to you, I'll have to click the gear icon, um, is that they have some page attributes already populated with the, um, with the theme. So if we click this drop down, you can see that there's a default theme. The default theme is basically whatever you've set up in Customizer, that's what you're gonna see. So that we've got the header, we've got a footer, right? However, let's say you're laying out a page that you do not want a header or a footer for. You can click this drop down and click on no header footer. Click on update. We can come back to this layout and click refresh. And what you notice is, is that the header and the footer is gone, right? So that's very key. Uh, once again, back in the day, you used to have to install a plugin to get rid of those headers and footers already baked into the theme, into the Beaver Builder theme. Um, and I believe this is also true for the Astra theme as well. If you recall watching our first video, um, that's one of the reasons why we recommend Astra as well, because it comes with a good majority of these, you know, now what seems to be uh, necessity things and themes and layouts with Beaver Builder. I mean, with um, WordPress. Um, from there, if we click this drop down again and click on sidebar and click on update, I don't know how this will actually work. Let's go ahead and click refresh. Yeah. So now we've got this sidebar added to the site and basically all of our page content is here. Now, we would never need to do this here. I hope not because this here just is not. Uh, too appealing, um, but those are all. Th these are available to you uh, already added to the website. I mean, to the theme. Um, all you have to do is activate them through the page editor, page editor, not Beaver Builder editor, page editor. Um, and remember, if you come here and you do not see that um, with the way WordPress is designed now, you'll click the gear icon here and you'll just click on page attributes and you'll notice the attributes here, no header, no footer, sidebar options. And then whenever you make your selection, you'll just click on update. So this concludes video number three. Um, if you are liking these videos, continue to please click that like button. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe to the channel. Um, I've got a whole lot more coming up um, and I guess I will see you in the next video.